Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Gerbeck. This is the 17th, I think, of, of June <laughs> 2022. And I'm just going to record oh, about 15 minutes or so. It's the 16th of, of a PowerPoint that I just put together like really quickly. And I think it's kind of fun. If you guys try to do something like this, then please share it with me because I'd like to see it as well. So I've been involved in genealogy class with some of my neighbor friends that uh, for, for years. And the last, since the pandemic, we've been meeting on Zoom and it's worked out really well. It's allowed us to have people that are not necessarily local that can come to our genealogy class. And there's five of us. So it's nothing major as far as um, formal. But one of the tasks that our leader, Cindy Stamford, did is she said, how about we find the oldest photograph we have in our genealogy and tell a story about it. So I put something together with the oldest photograph that I have and I love photographs. And so I did a little research. I'm really interested in the who, what, where, when, why, you know, why and what happened. And, and there's a lot of questions I still have, but it's fun. So I'm going to record this for prosperity's sake. And maybe, maybe um, somebody will have some answers to some of these questions. But, I, you know, at heart, I'm a historian. So let me talk about um, this one person that is uh, the oldest photograph I have. Now, I had, I had um, this picture for a very long time. My Aunt Peggy had had given it to us is and made copies of it and there she is margaret elizabeth brown and i didn't really think much of the picture as far as you know because we've had it for a very long time i didn't really think much about it but i cleaned it up a little bit because it had some flaws on it now this is a painting so it's a picture of a painting and i guess it's pretty commonly used in genealogy because this is a woman from 1846 and um, she is my great second great grandmother. So my mother's great grandmother, my grandmother's grandmother. There you go. My grandmother's grandmother and from the Finley side. So I have done some work on this family tree, but not extensive. So there's a bunch of holes in the story I'm about to tell, but you know, that's half the fun is trying to figure it out. So anyway, I'm looking at this photograph. She appears to be about 30 ish. And you can see she has light colored eyes. So she's probably has blue eyes, which is typical of my, my mom's family. I think she looks a little bit like me in the, in the face structure. You know, she's way back there, but anyway, very interesting photograph, the little comb in her hair and photograph, I should say painting. So this is probably about 1875-ish. We don't know. Anyway, so I'll tell you what I found and a little story about her. And now this is not professionally done or anything like that. I, I really just put this together um, fairly quickly. Anyway, so that is Elizabeth. So Margaret Elizabeth. So she was born in this area of Georgia, which is right there where that red pin is and you can see how close it is to Alabama and it's called Georgetown so I'd never heard of it before and I looked it up on the internet and it's right across the water from from Alabama I mean her little county is right there so you can see here's Georgia here's Alabama here's Atlanta it's way down here really way down down um, in that area but if you do a closer picture of it, you can see Georgetown is right there on this river. Well, it's actually a reservoir right now. And the river is, I, I can't even pronounce it because I'm gonna make my, I'm gonna embarrass myself. It's Chattahoochee, C-H-A-T-T-A-H-O-C-H-E-E. -E. Anyway, it's a long river, it runs really up and down and parallel to the uh, Mississippi. And it, you know, if, thinking about where she living in this little area, Georgetown, she's probably, you know, they're probably water and fishing was probably a big part of her life. They probably had boats. They, um, her father was a farmer. So maybe this is how he used his, how he got his, 
his goods to, you know, the farm to, to um, sell through the water. I don't know. I don't know if all of that reservoir right there was as wide as it was. I haven't, haven't looked into it. My, my good friend who is in genealogy with me, Deirdre, she wondered about maybe the reason, one of the reasons why they left the area and went to Arkansas from Georgia is because the, the reservoir took over their farmland. I don't know. I'd have to go back and do some historical analysis. But anyway, you can see right down the middle of that line, half of it is Alabama, half of it is Georgia. So a little bit about Georgetown, which I didn't know before, is that right now it has about 2000 residents. But in 1870, which she had already was, had just left the town, she just moved away, it had 263 people. So it was a very small county there, or town. In 1903, way after she had left, the whole town burned down. Just a post office and three houses were survived. So her parents were 20 and 19 when she was born. She was the oldest, and her father was a farmer. His name is Alexander... Edward Alexander, they called him Alex, and they called him EA. Her mother was Susan Long, and that's the first time I've ever heard of a Susan in our family tree. So EA was in, uh, born in Georgia, and Susan was born in South Carolina. So one of the things we did with our genealogy class, Cindy had us do, is we, we talked about what was the push and the pull for different eras of time in the places where our families lived. In other words, why did they move and why did they move to the area that they did? And also we talked a lot about what was the method of transportation, what was going on in the world. I have a subscription to newspapers.com. I have it because I'm a Wikipedia editor and we get it for free if you're a Wikipedia editor. And I love newspapers.com. And so what I'll do is I will pull up newspapers from as close as I can get to wherever my family members were, were living and just read the paper and see what was kind of on the front page. What was the news? Um, you know, possibly they're reading the same cartoons and the same advertisements I am. And I really like that because it gives you a lot of insight, not only to what was important, but the tone and prices of things as well. So let's hope I get this all in order because it's kind of a little jumbled, but I'm, I'm trying to get it right. Okay, so what happens is um, here's her father. This is my ancestry, a page from ancestry. Here's Edward Alexander. Now he marries Susan Long and she's from South Carolina. As I said, um, part of the reason, one of the things we learned in our research is people who lived in North and South Carolina, a lot of them moved west which was mississippi alabama georgia and kentucky and tennessee because the land was richer um it was um in north and south carolina they had been using it for cotton and tobacco and so on and and the nutrients and, and um so on weren't so great so they kept moving more and more west also as they moved west because um, it was new land it was inexpensive or at certain points of our time in the United States, they've had homestead acts, like you could move out and as long as you farmed it for five years, you could get it for free and, and other reasons, but it's too much to go into at this moment. So um, possibly Susan Long's family moved out to um, Georgia because of, you know, they were a farming family also. So if you look at this, you can see that um, I haven't done a lot of research on, um, Edward Alexander's family at all I've got a lot to do and Susan's family I don't really know much about her either but their oldest child is Margaret Elizabeth Brown which is a person I showed you the photograph of and then here's her siblings David Henry James uh Amethia I'm not sure what that is and Mary and John Wiley so on various census uh, that I have for the family um, there's still a lot of questions that I have. And so as I go through this, I haven't done a lot of research on these people, but there's not a lot of research to, to do yet. I mean, if they die young, then you've got some, you've got problems because there wasn't really death or birth certificates like they have right now. And you'll see a lot on here of death dates of 18, 
1889. Well, they didn't really die in 1889. What I have on here is that they died before 1889 or they died after 1889. And that's because I have a will of Edward Alexander. And on the will, it says he's leaving um, his farm and, and his money and his you know, cows and, and so on to his family members. And some of them are mentioned and some of them aren't because obviously some are, have already died. He also mentioned some of his grandchildren. Well, he mentions all his grandchildren. So that means some of the grandchildren weren't born yet at the time. So I thought that was really interesting. Wills are fascinating things. Oh, I should mention too, when I was going through and I was looking at all these siblings, all the children, Margaret, David, Henry, James, uh, Mary, and this <laughs> Armathea, great name. I'm sure it goes, I'm, I'm going to find a way that, that ties to somebody somewhere that nobody meant, not anywhere in the ancestry hints, because ancestry will give you hints, didn't mention this will until I got to John Wiley Brown, the very youngest child. And it mentions, um, it gave me a hint to look at this will. And that was for his father. But I had to go through every one of the, the children, even when I was looking at Edward and Susan's um, ancestry hits, nothing came up. So if you're doing ancestry and you're trying to find, you know, information and not everybody had wills, um, you, you got to really look around because there's a lot of things tied to one family member when it seems like it should be tied to somebody else. So anyway, I thought that was a little interesting aside. So what we're looking at here right now is the 1850 census. Now this is the family of, um, of Edward, um, Edward Brown there. He's 25 years old, he's a farmer. Um, he's worth $225, I guess. And there's his wife, Susan, Margaret, which is the woman I showed you the picture of, David and an infant that's one month old. So they were all born in Georgia, except you can see that Susan's born in South Carolina. And there's not a lot of information given on these censuses in 1850, but I do have that much information that gives you a lot. And then in 1860, they're still in Georgia. You can see at the top in Polk County and now E.A. Brown, still a farmer. He has uh, $1,500 in real estate and $1,200 in personal estate. And he's born in Georgia. And then there's Susan. She's now 36. She lives born in South Carolina. And Margaret, who is 14 at this point, David, Henry, James, Jane, and Mary. So Mary's four years old. Um, then we go to, that's 1860. Oh, so going back to this. So they're living in Georgia. Now, Margaret ends up getting married in 1863, 1864. And the person she marries is, um, uh, let me see here a second. She gets married to Joseph Bowles and it's either B-O-W-L-E-S or B-O-L-E-S. I've seen it both ways. I gotta do a lot of research. That makes it a lot harder when the last name spelled multiple ways. And she marries this guy um, in 1864 in Georgia, and this is the, the wedding certificate, so it's in cursive. It's difficult to read anyway because it's not a great copy. I'll probably have to try to find out some more, but I don't think it says a lot. It's mostly legalese, and they, um, what was going on is that that was a civil war, so he was from an area of Georgia that was much farther north, much farther north, so I don't know if that played she met him because of the waterway she lived on you know maybe he's traveling through or how they must have met that that's an interesting um um story i gotta figure out but by car they're probably three hours or so apart so in 1864 that's a long way still if, especially if you don't have any reason to go to that area so he had, before he met her, he had been a Confederate. Of course, he's a Confederate, he's in Georgia. And he was a Confederate soldier in infantry, a, a private. And he served in the siege of Port Hudson. Now, I didn't know anything about this at all. I was reading through the Wikipedia pages, really well written as most Civil War 
um, Wikipedia pages are. And this was, had happened in Louisiana and it was awful. They were um, right on the Mississippi River and they were trying to control the Mississippi River and the Confederates lose and they lose in a big way. They're starved, there's dysentery, there's sunstroke, um, all kinds of awful things happen to them there because they're um, trying to hold this, this area. And the Union won and when the Union won, they were able to control the Mississippi River, which kind of helps, you know, turns the tide a lot in the in the uh, Civil War. So there was a few notable things that happened here in the siege of Port Hudson. And one was that uh, African Americans had fought for the Union. Some of them were free and some of them had been in enslaved people that now were fighting for the Union. And at that time, they even had some uh, African American uh, officers. So uh, Apparently, down in Louisiana, they do Civil War reenactments, and there's quite a lot of um, recognition for, for this being uh, a, one of the places that had a lot of African American soldiers as well as officers. So that was pretty interesting. So she gets married to him. Now, this battle was on in 1863, July 9th, 1863 was when it was over, but they get married in 1864. So how that happens, I don't really know, but um, not long after that, her family, her mom and dad and siblings moved to Arkansas. You can see this, the 1870 census. Now she's married, 1860, 1863, she gets married. No, 1864. So somewhere in between that time, her family moves to Arkansas. And remember what I was saying is that they kept going more west because that was better land. Um, it was um, probably cheaper land or free land if you farmed it. And during the Civil War and right after the Civil War, there was the railroads were really becoming better and you know more um, more more um, more railroads being built. Now, right at the Civil War, of course, in the South, they were a mess, but, that was really important to getting people around the railroads. So that was a big phenomenon in the 1850s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and going forward. So that'd be right around the time that, so Arkansas was moving west. So it's kind of a funny thing to think of Arkansas as out west, but that's what it was. Arkansas was out west. So in Georgia, she had two children, Edward and Charles, and we don't, I really don't know much about them. So here's her census with her in 19, 1870. And she's living with her husband, who's a farmer from Georgia and Margaret, and she's keeping house, it says. And there's her children, Edward, Charles, and then there's Mary. And Mary is born in Arkansas. Mary is a relative that actually I know something about. I'm not going to go into it in this video because this story is about Margaret. But um, Mary, I think, was called Molly, and she lived a long life, and she had a lot of children that, you know, had children, had children. So it's very interesting, maybe a video on her someday. But at this point, you can see that uh, they're, they're in 1870, they're living in Arkansas. Her family is also living in Arkansas. And I believe that was her close family right there. They're in evening shade, which is kind of more northern Arkansas in the middle. And um, I don't know that we had a lot of family out there yet. I, I have to spend some time looking into that, but I'm not quite sure. So um, I'm looking at my notes, see if there's anything else. Oh, when it says a woman is keeping house. Now, it's not like nowadays you say you're a house you know, you, you, you stay home and take care of the children and, and clean the house. When you were keeping house, the 1870s, this was a, a, a horribly crazy, massive endeavor, right? This was just, I mean, you're making things, you're, you're turning butter, you're sewing your clothes, you're, you're bedding, you're, you don't have any labor saving devices. You, you have to, uh, sweep out the floors. There's no vacuum cleaners and dishwashers and, and you know, you got to handle all the medical stuff and you don't have a car and, and 
grow your food. It was quite a task. These people that kept house back in those days, oh my gosh, it was, can't even imagine. So here's where evening shade is. If you look on this map, you can see it on the red and kind of gives you an idea how far it is from everything. There's, it's in Arkansas, but it's in Northern Arkansas. It's um, really far west of Nashville and very south of Missouri and St. Louis. It's also very west of Memphis, and um, it's not close to Little Rock at all. It's, it's out in the Nowhereville. And this is a closer up picture of Evening Shade, which is a great name, by the way. And Sydney, which is just north of that, I think if you were to drive it now, it'd be a little over an hour. But Sydney is where my mom was from, and most of, you know, all of her family was in Sydney. In fact, my mom wasn't born in Sydney. She was born near Sydney. They didn't have... <laughs> They didn't have a town. So you can see Cave City, Mount Pleasant. So it's a area that's, um, I think it's good farm country, hot and humid at times. And it's at the bottom kind of at the Ozark Mountains. So when I've been back there, it's incredibly beautiful in places. So it was pretty wild as far as, um, you know, vegetation. I'm sure they had to clear a lot of fields and so on to live there. So she's there with her husband and he's farming. Oops, let's see. So I, as I was telling you earlier, I found this by accident, this will of her father's. This is E.A. Wills, uh, E.A. Um, Edward Alexander Bowles. And it's, of course, it's in cursive and there's a lot um, to read, but you have to really sit and and de decipher it and see who's living who's not living what his children and his grandchildren are named and so on and whenever he's talking about his daughters who were married it gives maiden names so that's really cool to be able i mean not maiden names married names so you were able to kind of go oh okay that's who she married that's where i'll find her records so this is this is margaret um, um ancestry tree and this is not I haven't been able to go really in depth with it because there's there's a lot. Um, but you can see she married Joseph Bowles and she had these children. First one was Edward and that's Eddie and then Charles. And I know nothing about them, I think at that point. And then Susan, apparently her name was Susie. They called her Susie and she married somebody named Jaeger. And then there's Mary Jane, who they called Molly. I loved all the nicknames. Everybody got a nickname back there and she married somebody named Taylor who died and then she remarried somebody named Jones and I, as I said Mary Jane I have uh, Mary uh, Molly um, I have a lot of photos um, or photos a lot of history of her because she lived a very long life but I'm not going to go into it right now and then there's Josephine F. Bowles and they called her Josie and she married a Finley now that's my direct ancestor so um, you can see I have a couple photos in them as well. And then there's a child named William E. Bowles. Now, William, it's really interesting because I don't know where he fits into this. Remember, I said that there was a, um, a will that was made in 1889. And that is kind of helping me out trying to decide who's alive at that time. And we know that William Bowles is still alive in 1889 because his, he's mentioned in the will. And uh, Molly's mentioned the will, Josephine's mentioned in the will, and Susan is mentioned in the will. But everybody else is dead. And um, so as grandchildren, so um, I don't know when they died. But in William's case, I don't know when he was born either. So I don't find him on any of the census. Is So I'm not sure if he was born earlier or if he's born later, I really don't know. Um, Margaret, she, her husband dies, Joseph dies, and he dies in 18, like three years before she does. So 1877, um, I think. And I don't know before, I have no idea. It could have been anything that took him out. Tuberculosis was really bad. Lots of diseases were there that were really bad. And he had um, been a farmer. And so his children, when he died, would, his boys would have been 
14 and 13, if they had been alive, which I don't even know. And so I don't think they would have been able to handle this, this farm. So, and she didn't have a lot of family. She just had her, her, her parents and her siblings. And I don't think they were, how do I say it? I don't think they were, you know, established enough necessarily. I'll have to do more research on it. So what happens to her when her, when her husband dies? I don't know. I might be able to find records to show what happened to the farm. I'll have to look into it. And as I said, Edward and Charles, I don't know what happened to them. They died before 1889. They could have died even before, before that. They could have died before their mother. They could have died as, as children or we don't know. So Margaret dies at the age of 34. And she is um, had six children in 10 years. She died in evening shade. I don't know what from, but she died in December of 1880. And I can't find her on the 1880 census, which would have been done in April of 1880. So she should have been alive. So I don't know what happened to her and her kids after her husband's death. I, I've found a few censuses for her family, but I'm not finding them on it anywhere. So, I mean, I can find some censuses and she's not on it with them. So I don't really know, but, um, her husband dies in 1887. Now, Josephine, which is my ancestor, she's born in 1880, 1876. So that might have been, he might have died. He might have died right after when she was an infant. That would make sense. Um, we don't, I don't know, as I said, William Bowles, if he was born after Josephine or before, because I don't have a birthday. So we don't know if Margaret died in childbirth. No, that doesn't make sense. No, because if her husband died in 1877, um, anyway, the, probably her last child is Josephine. We just, just don't know. There's a lot of questions there. As you can see, there's a lot of, a lot of questions to figure out. Her husband was either 36 or 46. I don't know. I've got two different birth dates for him, but he was a young man. I did go on. I found a find, find a grave um, little uh, bio and it had all the same information that I had had. I had already found. But one of the things it said, and I don't know who wrote this, was that um, Eliz Margaret Elizabeth and um, her husband had died. Edward Alec, no her husband, Joseph, they died young and they left young children and those children went to go live with her family. So that's who took them in. But I can't find that. I can't, I haven't been able to find that a lot either yet. So it's, it's a, you know, a bit of a head scratcher there. And uh, I, it's kind of exciting because there's a lot of stuff still to do. So, um, you know, so I'll go back to this picture really quick. And my genealogy class and I were talking about it. And, you know, I, I had thought that these people were very poor and they probably were, but getting a photo or a picture painted at that time would have been not inexpensive. And she, she died at 34 and she doesn't look much. She looks in her thirties and I know she's wearing black. So that could be because she's a widow or maybe not. And I, I really like to know more about this photograph. When it was taken, how do we know it's her? It's just been passed around to the family that that's her. How do we know? Who has the painting? Is there something written on the back? Who did the painting? Why is she by herself? Um, I doubt it was painted after her death. Would, you know, it's, there's just, lots of questions about this painting because as I said I don't think it would be something that you know why just one person why not her and her husband or why not her and her kids or her and one child or why just her especially if you weren't wealthy enough to sit for for a painting so some some of the other questions we had had is um you know, were they wealthy or did they have any money? Possibly maybe selling the farmland 
in after her husband's death might have given her some money but then would you go get your picture take your photo painted and again would you get your photo painted when you're when you don't include your children in it with photography they had a lot of photographers that would come to a town and set it up and they'd be there for a week or so and they'd have a backdrop and people would come in and they'd put their best clothes on and they get their picture taken and then the the photographer would go to another town because they're in a really rural area so in that case you have an opportunity to get your photo taken you run in and you get it done you don't have you can't wait till all the family gets here and you know you've got uh, the harvest in or whatever you you it's an opportunity you get it taken when you can but when it's a painting that's being made i mean possibly sort of somebody could have come from town to town and or area area because they weren't in a town and just painted um did quick paintings of that sort also uh, i've also been told um, and i'd heard this before but tamberly um, somebody from my genealogy class was also mentioning it sometimes they would come and they do a painting and the body was already done the torso and and then all they do is fill in the face and the background's already done and they would just do it quickly so you know a man woman child they just then fill in the face and they already had the body kind of already done so that's i don't know i'm very curious about that so some of the things i really need to know is um so she died in 1880 her youngest child my direct ancestor was only a couple years old so we're told that her family raised him but i have no record of that at all and her oldest child would have been 14 but if he even lived that late so i don't know um, um let's see i have a few other questions i gotta <clears throat> i gotta try to figure out so she didn't live with her parents because i found them on i found her parents on their own 1880 census but she's not there with them and her kids are not there with them and remember she dies in december of 1880 and um you know just questions 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 i think it's really interesting to learn about the person and the family and i think it tells a lot about us and i think that we're more alike than we we realize you know you were we're much more um you know human nature you know you want the best for your kids and you want um, to have a good healthy life and you know you want to have plenty to eat and a little money in the nest egg and um, get your kids the best education they can possibly get and um so on so i think it's i think it's really interesting to look into this kind of thing so that's where i am i hope you guys enjoyed this i kind of just did it knowing probably nobody's gonna watch this video but i wanted to get a little record of it and just just because so take care and i hope you do your own family research and i hope you're definitely looking at your own family uh, photographs and get those in the best shape you can if you need help or if you have questions please let me know i'm happy to advise any anything possible on genealogy not that i know that much or photos that's up in my uh, attic. Thanks, guys.